This is the only ball of the year, and I see why. Everyone is absurdly excited. Your Highness, you sound so detached. We are all encouraged to enjoy the ball tomorrow. <sighs> right you are. What a burden. Huh. I never thought we'd see eye to eye, but I agree. I'd rather be swinging my blade than wasting my time with some girl at a ball. Felix, your highness! You must be joking, right? This is our chance to dance with all of the ladies of the academy to our heart's content. You wish to throw away the best day of the whole year for sword practice? Insanity, I tell you! I'm pretty excited about the ball myself. It's not like we get to do things like this very often. Too true, Ash. In fact, I'm going to do you a favor and give you a crash course in chatting up girls. By tomorrow, you'll be an expert. Actually, I'd much prefer if someone could just teach me how to dance. Don't worry about the dancing part. I can teach you that easy. It's time for the ball. That warrants at least a tiny bit of makeup, don't you think, Ingrid? Just a smidge? I... hmm... Maybe. I'll think about it. It's settled. Tomorrow morning, we'll meet up in Ingrid's room. Ooh, I can't wait! <laughs> you know, there's no telling where life will take us after we leave here. If only we could find a way to come together again, just like this. A fine notion, your highness. Perhaps five years from now? Five years from now? Ah! That's when Garrig Mach Monastery will be holding its Millennium Festival. By then, we'll be addressing your highness as your majesty instead. That's right. I suppose we all know it's coming, but by then you'll be far removed from us. Come now, you know me better than that. My title may change, but I won't. And it won't just be me, you know. Five years from now, you'll all have your own stuffy positions to contend with. But as I understand it, the festivities at the Millennium Festival will be of a scale far beyond anything we've yet seen. In other words, the perfect excuse for all of us to return here. Ooh, a reunion? That sounds fun! I wouldn't miss it for the world! I'd love for you to be there as well, Professor. After all, you're the heart of the Blue Lion House. Good. Then it's settled. Of course, if something happens and I'm not able to attend, I'm leaving all of the logistics of organizing this reunion to you, Professor. It's true. I'm sure being a king will keep you busy, but it's a bit early to be backing out of your own plans, don't you think? Yes, I suppose you're right. I'm sorry. You have my word. I will return as well. Count on it. Running away? I understand. You hardly had the time to breathe in there. It must be hard to be the favorite teacher at the ball. <laughs> poor, poor professor. Was that a joke? I find it hard to tell with you. Just think of all the students begging you to dance. Professor, 
What are you doing here? No, I should think not. As a child, Edelgard taught me how to dance. It was... a bit awkward, honestly. I've told you before there were siblings by marriage, haven't I? Her birth mother was my stepmother, although I didn't know that at the time. My stepmother treated me with such kindness, just as though I were her own flesh and blood. And yet she never so much as hinted that she had her own child, Edelgard. We were born and raised in different territories, without ever knowing the other even existed. Yet, against all odds, for just over a year, we became childhood friends. Indeed. Unaware of each other's stations or backgrounds, we met and became incredibly close. This was when she and Lord Arundel were living in the kingdom. They were in exile. This was a time of great turmoil within the Empire. I ran into her when visiting Lord Arundel's residence with my father. She seemed... quite bored with everything. At first, I found her to be difficult and stubborn. But that facade quickly fell away, revealing her true self beneath. That's around the time when she taught me how to dance. Her instruction was... though, let's call it strict, to put it nicely. Wrong foot, Dimitri! You're supposed to lead with your right! Oh, the sun's going down. I really ought to be heading home. That one year before she had to return to the Empire was... so much fun. The time of my life, in many ways. It's kind of pathetic to think about it all these years later. But can you guess what I gave her as a parting gift? Huh. Good guess, Professor. But I swear, it came from the heart. In Fargus, we've long considered blades as tools of destiny, as a way to cut a path to a better future. She was being dragged all over, unable to live the life she wanted. I thought the dagger could help her cut a path to the future she dreamed of. However, that was many years ago. I'm sure she's forgotten all about the boy I was back then. I'm afraid it's far too late for that. Things are different now. She's different. I'm different. Anyway, I'm feeling a bit out of place here. Festivities like this don't suit me. Still, I suppose I should get back in there. Goodbye, Professor. But where is there to run? This place is filled with joyful students looking for a dance. The Goddess Tower waits for you. Greetings, Professor. Nothing to report. Ah, other than the legend of the Goddess Tower, of course. Have you heard the students talking about it? On the last night of the ethereal moon, on the same night as the ball, if a man and a woman go to the goddess tower and make a wish, it's sure to come true. I have a wish, but I can't find anybody to make it with me. Evening, Professor. Lovely night, isn't it? Just look at those stars. I heard you were headed over to the Goddess Tower, and I got curious about who you might be meeting. But, here you are, all by yourself. This isn't a lover's tryst at all. <laughs> oh yeah, the Goddess Tower is where lovers meet. Didn't anybody tell you? They say that if you exchange vows here, they always come true. It's a sacred place for lovers.
well, the person I'm interested in is already here. You're here alone. I'm here alone. I was thinking, maybe... Well, of course. We're the only two people here, aren't we? I keep thinking about it, and it just makes sense. My crest? And yours? <laughs> okay, true, true. You know, I've never regretted any of my past behavior until you turned me down just now. I can't be who I've been my whole life. I gotta get it together and become a man you can trust. I know that sounds like another one of my games, but it's true. I'll prove it to you. Anyway, I'm going to head back to the ball. Since we're both here, would you accompany me? Well then, my lady, I do hope you'll give me the honor of a dance. It will be good practice for our first dance at our wedding reception. <laughs> I I'm kidding. Anyway, let's get going before you change your mind. It seems that everyone is having a delightful time. Will you not dance some more? How dull of you. Had I a body of my own? Oh, I would sing and dance until I fell upon the ground. But you... <laughs> do as you will. Oh, you're not the only one who feels that way. Look over there. bored beyond compare. Will you not follow her? Oh, come on, hurry up. I know that you are curious to see what she is up to. I hear someone singing from over there. in the past. Actually, it is not that I have heard it. I... Did I once sing that song to someone? No. There's more. I wrote this song. Oh, but how could that be so? If that were true, then how could she be singing it? Unless... No, no. I am suddenly so exhausted. As are you, no doubt. Quickly then, to bed with you. <laughs> 